In this lesson, we'll be building off of what we learned previously, which was adding and subtracting two functions. In this lesson, we'll be multiplying and dividing two functions to create another function. So we say it's a product quotient of functions. So first, we're going to look at the properties of functions that were uh, created or obtained by multiplying two functions. So when two functions f and g are combined to form the product of f and g, um, yeah, then the function is called the product of f and g. For any val given value of x, the function value is represented by f of x times g of x. So that's basically saying what we said earlier uh, in the previous lesson. Instead of adding, we're now multiplying. So we're multiplying the y-coordinates from f and g to get the y-coordinate of this new combined function. And just like last time, the domain of this product of f and g could be found by looking at the intersection or the common elements of the domains of f and g. So if you know the domain of f and you know the domain of g, you should be able to determine the domain of the product of f and g. So uh, everything we said above could basically basically be applied to the quotient of f and g, except for one thing, um, which is the domain of the quotient of f and g is not only are we looking at the intersecting or the common elements between the domains of f and g, but you also have to consider where g of x is equal to zero. Because if g of x is equal to zero, f over g or the quotient of f and g is uh, not defined okay because you can't divide by zero um, but everything else is the same so instead of uh, adding or subtracting or multiplying the coordinates we'll find the y coordinates of the quotient of f and g by dividing the y coordinates of f and g so they're pretty straightforward uh, to create these uh, it's pretty hard to create these functions whether you're adding subtracting multiplying or dividing in example 1a, we have the concentration of contaminated material in kilograms per liter in the container of water being purified can be modeled by the function c of t equals t squared, where t is time in seconds. The volume in liters of water in the container can be modeled by the function v of t equals 650 plus 250t. So with all that being said, they want us to write a function that represents the number of kilograms of contaminated material in the container at any time t. So our first function, c of t, measures a concentration, so kilograms per liter. Okay, let's write it. Kilograms per liter. Now, we want to write a function that represents the number of kilograms of contaminated material in the container. So you just want kilograms. You don't want kilograms per liter. So you multiply it by luckily, guess what? Our second function tells us the volume. So if you multiply kilograms per liter by liters, the volume, you have kilograms left over. So for example one, it's actually a very good idea to multiply the volume function and the concentration function. So the product of V and C is actually going to give us the answer. Okay, it's actually going to give us a function that determines the number of kilograms of contaminated material in the container at any given moment. So T squared times 650 plus 250T. Uh, they can ask us to simplify. Uh, you know what? Let's just simplify. Why not? Okay, so that is a very useful function. It tells me the, the number of kilograms of contain contaminated material at any given time t. Okay, so let's test out this function. What if uh, 20 seconds has passed? If 20 seconds have passed, then how many kilograms of contaminated material will there be? Well, this is uh, unfortunately a rather large number. Hmm. 
Okay, let's see. Twenty squares, four hundred. So whoa, two million two hundred sixty thousand kilograms. So therefore, after twenty seconds. There's two million two hundred sixty eight thousand kilograms of contaminated material. Okay, so for question two. It says, if the function f of t describes the per capita energy consumption in a country at time t, and the function p of t describes the population of the country at time t, then explain what the product of f and p represents. Okay, so per capita energy consumption, that's the amount of energy used per person. Amount of energy used per person. Uh, in a country at time t and population that's pretty straightforward so if we multiply the amount of energy used per person by the actual number of people in the country you're going to get the amount of energy the country uses right let's write it down an example so we have kilowatt hours per person okay so the amount of energy used per person, that's the per capita energy consumption. And if I'm actually going to take that, this is F, the units are F of T, and I'll multiply that by the actual number of people. Okay, guess what? It cancels out. So this is the amount of energy I'm going to use for the country at that given point in time. So the product function represents the energy consumption of the country at time t. And if you're having a hard time understanding uh, why that is the case, try to imagine that there's a country where the per capita energy consumption is, let's say one kilowatt hour. So you have one kilowatt hour per person. And in this country, let's say there's a hundred people. So one kilowatt, per, one kilowatt hour per person, and there's a hundred people. So how much energy is my country consuming at that point in time. So one kilowatt hour per person times 100 people. So that means I'm using 100 kilowatt hours at that given moment. For example three, they say if f of x is odd, g of x is even, determine whether the quotient of f and g is even, odd, or neither. So this is a throwback to what we did in the beginning of the course. If f of x is odd, that means it has point symmetry about the origin. And it also means that f of negative x equals negative f of x. And if g of x is even, that means g of x has line symmetry about the y-axis. And g of negative x equals g of x. So believe it or not, given these two facts, I can tell you whether the quotient uh, is even, odd, or neither. So let's start off by saying let h of x equals f of x over g of x, which is a quotient of f and g. So just like the beginning of the course, h of negative x. So it's f of negative x over g of negative x. Now f of negative x, now because f of, f of x is odd, then f of negative x equals negative f of x. 
And since g of x is, oops, g of x is even, then g of negative x equals g of x. If we simplify this, is equal to negative h of x. Now remember, h of x is our quotient of f and g. So since h of negative x equals negative h of x, So since h of, negative, h of negative x is equal to negative h of x, therefore f over g of x is odd. Okay, so this lesson we're covering the product and quotient of functions, and in the previous lesson we talked about um, adding or finding the sum and difference of two functions. So we're going to learn one more way to combine the functions and then we're going to put it all together.